Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about rag quilts. Some of you are going, rag quilts? What's a rag quilt? Yep, I know. I had a friend reached out last week that said, hey, I would like to make a rag quilt for my granddaughter. So what did I do? Huh, I think that's a perfect opportunity to make a new YouTube video about making a rag quilt. So here we are. So if you're interested in knowing what a rag quilt is and how to make one, then stay tuned because this video is for you. Hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney, and obviously, this is my YouTube channel. I have this YouTube channel because I want to help people discover the joy of quilting and learning that, you know what, it is not all that difficult. If you have a desire to learn how to quilt, then you can do it. It's not intimidating, and I'm here to show you how. Because quilting has made such a huge impact on my life. It's, well, it's my happy place. It's what I love to do. And there is nothing better than making a quilt or making some type of homemade project and gifting it to somebody else. I love making it, but oh, that anticipation and waiting when I get to gift that to somebody and seeing their eyes light up when they receive it, priceless. Rag quilt. You're going, okay, this sounds interesting, but what exactly is a rag quilt? Well, I'll have to admit, years ago, I didn't know either. A rag quilt is basically where you've got your seams on the outside and you're working with flannel such that you're putting your backs together and you're stitching your seams so your seams are showing up and are outside instead of hidden in the inside on the top of your quilt and also along the edges. And if you're using flannel, the more you wash it, the more you use it, it's going to get, well, kind of raggy and it's going to, it's going to shred a little. And there you have it. That's why it is called a rag quilt. Now that you know what a rag quilt is, let's get into a little more specifics. Usually a good way to start is to start with five fabrics. So I'm going to do a baby quilt that is going to be four squares by five squares. I'm going to do 10 inch squares. So I picked out five colors. Didn't want girlish, didn't want boyish, and I love turquoise. So I picked out these five colors. Now, flannel is the best fabric to use for a rag quilt. It, hang on here, it really, uh, <laughs> I guess you could call it, rags well, it, it, it comes apart, so you end up with a really nice raggy end on it. Um, but oftentimes people like to use something like a cuddle. This, this is kind of a, a lower end, lower nap cuddle. It's, it's kind of polyester -y on the back, but it's nice and soft and it really went well with my colors. And so I chose that. Other people may use fleece as part of their um, rag quilt, and I'll get into more of that and where that could be used. Otherwise, this is a piece of cuddle. Oh, so soft and so cuddly. And it has a serious snap to it, and it's much heavier. And so this might be very nice on the back. So those are the colors I picked for my flannel, and I bought the, or for my baby quilt, and I purchased them in yardage. I'm also going to do another rag quilt for a guy. So it's going to be much bigger. Granted, I could have gone out and purchased a bunch of yardages of fabric and done that, but <laughs> I'm all about optimizing my time. So guess what? You can buy flannel squares in a layer cake. So I went and found this great kind of manly colored layer cake. It's kind of got grays and some creams and blues in it. And I bought a 10 inch layer quilt, layer cake, because I'm going to do 10 inch squares. And then I decided this is what I'm going to use for the top. So it's very, you know, piece like, but on the back, I really didn't want it to have multiple squares of colors. So I went with yardage and I just bought a coordinating piece of fabric to use for the back. And so this is going to save me a lot of time by being able to have all my 10 inch squares pre-cut. Okay, so pre-washing. Here's the big question. Are you gonna pre-wash or are you not? 
A lot of times when you go out and you research doing rag quilts, I watched a number of videos and saw blog posts and everything. I always like to gather as much information as I can on it. And well, a lot of them say you really need to pre-wash flannel. Otherwise, if you don't, your quilt's going to get all wonky when, you, when, it, when it gets washed. Well, guess what? I don't exactly agree with that. And I actually had a conversation with uh, my fabric store owner about, hey, do you need to pre-wash? Pre-washing takes a lot of extra time in the process. It's, you gotta wash it. And then, as you can see here, granted, this hasn't been washed, but if you wash flannel and you haven't like pre-sewed your edges, you're gonna lose, you could easily lose half inch to an inch of fabric just in the pre-washing. And then you have to iron it all. And usually it's kind of pretty wrinkled. So it's going to take a lot of time to iron it. I don't have time for that. So I am not pre-washing. All of the fabrics, um, except one of my turquoise for the baby quilt, are good brand flannels. Robert Kaufman is three of them. I'm not sure about the last one. But they're all nice, sturdy flannels. The only one I'm a little bit cautious about is the last one, which at first I had thought was flannel when I picked it up, but as I got it home, I realized, well, it's not flannel. It's more of a cuddle. But because it's lighter weight, I was a little concerned about maybe it not shrinking kind of the same as the other fabrics, but I've decided, nope, we're gonna go with it. So we're gonna find out and we'll let you know at the end. <laughs> so there we go. We've got that. So um what else do you need you need obviously your rotary cutter and your mat and um, rulers in order to cut your squares and i would suggest the thing about a rag quilt is you sew it together and then you you clip up to the seam in a variety of places around it so that's how you're going to get the rag look yes you can use a standard scissor like this and this is a nice scissor but you know what when you do that often enough <clears throat> excuse me, it's hard on your hand. You're too, depending, on the <clears throat> depending on the size of the quilt that you're doing, that could be a lot of snipping. So <clears throat> recommended <clears throat> is these Fiskars, really that are kind of meant for doing rag quilts. Their spring action blades reduce hand fatigue. So I went and purchased one of these and at my store it ran about 25 bucks. So I decided I am on the computer a lot. I type, my hands and my wrists often are, well, tired and sore by the end of the day anyway. So anything I can do to help reduce the tension when I'm trying to do my happy stuff is always a win. It's money well spent. There we go. So we have everything we need and we're ready to go. Now, you're going to have to do some math. Yep, I'm sorry. You're going to have to do some math to kind of figure out <clears throat> the size. Well, one, figure out what size quilts you want, what size blocks you're going to do, and then how many squares you need, and then how many squares you can get out of a yard of fabric. I've decided to do a baby quilt. This is kind of like the smallest size you can start with. So I figured it was a good way to start. And so it's not a crib size. It is smaller than a crib size. And I am doing, as I mentioned, 10 inch squares. This is what I'm doing for the guys, but this is the size square I'm gonna have. And we're going to do a half inch seam. So essentially, I'm down to a nine inch square. So my baby quilt is gonna be four squares across and five squares down, which gives me a baby quilt that is 36 by 45. So there we have it. So I had to basically take the block size I'm cutting, subtract off a half an inch, I'm sorry, subtract off an inch for my seams, and that gives me my finished block. And then you just kind of do the math and go, well, okay, four by five, five by five, maybe you want it square, which would be 45 by 45. Now, if you want to cut your blocks smaller, that's fine too. I would highly recommend you not get them too small. Otherwise, you're really gonna lose the effect of the fabric and it's gonna be all rag. So personally, I wouldn't go anything smaller than say an eight, eight and a half inch cut square would be my thoughts on that. But 
go ahead, give it a try, make up a few sample ones and see what you think. Um, so in that case, I picked out five fabrics. If I'm doing a 10 inch square and my fabric is about 42 wide, that means I can only get four 10 inch squares per strip of fabric. The fabric in a yard is 36 inches, which means I can get three 10 inch strips. Three times 10 is 30. And then I'm gonna have this leftover six inches. Then you'll figure out what you do with it later. Throw it in your stash. Um, so out of one yard of fabric, I can cut 12 squares. Okay, in my case, I'm doing four by five, which means I need 20 squares for the entire quilt. And I've got five pieces of fabric. So that means I only need four squares of fabric per color. Ho, 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 that is really nice. That is one strip, one 10 inch strip of a piece of fabric. So all I need is a third of a yard of fabric of each of the colors I want for the top. Now, if you want it patchworky on both the top and the bottom, then just double it. So now you need two thirds of a yard of fabric of each and you're good to go. Me, I actually prefer a single fabric on the back with patchwork on the front. So in that case, um, and I'm using one of my five fabrics both on the top and the bottom, which means four of my fabrics I'm going to get a third of a yard and the last fabric I'm getting two yards. So that covers a third of the yard for the front and the other yard and two thirds for the back. I will put some of this information below in the description so don't get wrapped up in it. And believe me, if you need any help, call your local quilt store, go on to Facebook, find a beginning quilting group, or come on over to my Facebook group, Life Fulfilled. I'll be happy to answer any questions you've got or Find me on Facebook, Wendy J. Haney, and send me a direct message. I'll be glad to help you do the math. I'm pretty good at math. So there we have it. And now we're ready to get going and start turning this into a quilt. Now we're ready to start cutting our fabric. So I have one of my fabrics out here, this cute little giraffe guy, and we need to straighten up the left edge. I've already laid it out, but it's kind of wonky. You know what? My husband says, don't say wonky. People don't know what wonky is. I think you guys know. It's, it's not straight. <laughs> so, as I mentioned in one of my other videos on cutting fabric, we are going to take this square ruler, and it doesn't need to be very big. This just happens to be the ruler I have out, and get me a straight line at the bottom. And then we're going to take my long ruler, that will get the full width of my fabric and we're going to straighten it out and I'll make sure all the way down. In this case, I've got quite a bit of down here I'm going to cut down, but you can't quite see it at the top. There is, um, there is um, not very much I'm going to be trimming, so I'm really trimming off the least amount I can to get it straight. Okay, so now that I have my long ruler set. I remove the other ruler and I cut. All right, see? So there, up at the top, I barely, I barely um, cut off any. Okay, so now, I'm guessing most of you do not have, if you're trying to cut it 10 inch strips, you do not have a ruler that is 10 inches wide. So here's how you handle this. I have a six inch ruler and here's my 12 and a half inch square that I'm actually going to be using to cut my 10 inch squares later and square them up. So what I do is I have six inches, which means I need four more inches on this side of the fabric to get 10 inches. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my square and I'm lining up, I'm lining it up both at the bottom and on the sides. So there we go. So there's my four inches. That means I can butt my taller ruler that fits the whole width of the fabric. I can butt that up next to it. And now 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And yes, I truly do count that once in a while to make sure my math is right. Did I say I'm good at math? Yes, but sometimes I just position things badly. And then I make sure my bottom is nice and straight also with the ruler. So there we go. Now I have the ability to cut a 10 inch strip. There we go. I have a 10 inch strip. Now, if you caught my cutting video, you'll, you've heard me say that the further you get over to the fabric after you cut your first strip, you're going to have to kind of re, re-level it. Well, you just cut a 10 inch strip. So there's a good chance the next strip eh, might not be quite right. Don't worry about it. Don't try and trim up again on this edge. Just what I do is I just, I just kind of make sure it's right. I get my, I get my 10 inches cut and then I square up my 10 inch squares later after the fact. Okay, so I'm gonna just, you know what? Let's just do that right now. While I have it, I'm gonna shift this over here. We're gonna see, we're gonna see how much, usually I don't do this much shifting in my fabric after I've got it squared up, but there's my four inches. And if I put this up to it, am I still gonna be square at the bottom? No, I'm not. You can't quite see it in the video here, but as I get further over to this edge, it's not, it's not even and straight all the way across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just shift it so this longer one is straight with that, which means this one is a little bit off. And I'm gonna cut my 10 inch strip. Okay, now we've got my 10 inch strip, which I now know is slightly, not exactly 10 inch strip all the way around. No worries. Now we're going to, in cutting 10 inch squares, a 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch square is very handy because it, it's really easy to get your 10 inch square um, out of it instead of trying to mess with smaller rulers. Now, if you don't go, want to go out and buy another ruler and you've got an eight and a half inch ruler, okay, then make your quilt using eight and a half inch squares, which means you're going to have a seven and a half inch finished square. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to trim off the selvage. And I know for a fact this is not going to be nice and even and pretty and 10 inch right away. So we're gonna get my 10 inch and we're gonna even it on the side edge and the bottom, which means I can cut a 10 inch even right there. But if you look at the top, yep, it's, it's wider than 10 inches. But it's so much easier to fix it here than to try and do it when you were making your strips. No big deal. There we go. And then we're gonna do the next one. 10 inch. Yep. And it actually starts getting closer to 10 inch, whoa. Closer to 10 inches as I get to the bottom of my strip. Okay. So I am not going to cut all of the rest of those for you because I think you get the point. So we're gonna cut, and in this case, I only need, I'm gonna set that one aside back there. I only need four squares of each of my colors because of the size of the baby quilt I'm doing. So my first strip, I could have left it at that. And there's my four, there's my four squares that I needed for my quilt. But I wanted to show you that it's gonna get the more you try and cut from one strip of fabric, the more often you're going to need to re-straighten re the left side or just adjust it a little. And then when you cut your squares out, you're going to adjust that way. Okay, so now that we've got that done, now you're going to put your squares together. Here's where rag quilts are rather interesting. Is basically, let me pull all my fabric over here you can do a couple of things. So 
If you go out and Google rag quilts and watch some videos and some blogs, you're gonna find a variety of ways of doing them. One, which is what I'm going to show you, is taking two pieces of fabric and putting them together. And there's, there's our block. Yep, there's our block and we're good. Flannel is fairly heavy. And if you go with a minky or cuddle back, like a really heavyweight one, you're gonna have some pretty significant warmth to that with just your two layers. If you're making it for a baby and they happen to wanna use it in the crib, well, the, the kid's got his little snuggle, what do they call them? Not onesies? They're little blanket sleepers. That's what they're called, they're little sleepers. Well, those are pretty snugly warm. And so he really probably doesn't need a lot of extra weight on top of that. And if you're making a guy quilt, which is what I'm going to do, let me tell you, if guys, if the rest of the guys are anything like my husband, oh my God, they like radiate heat. And so if you're making a quilt for the guy to, you know, snuggle up with a little bit and just having an extra layer of warmth while they're sitting in front of the TV, they're fully dressed. They have plenty of layers of clothes and they just want a little bit of that extra warmth because, well, here in Minnesota, it's been minus 26 degrees. So you need a little extra warmth or it just feels good. But in that case, you probably don't need a lot of extra heaviness or warmth. Two layers of flannel is pretty good, but there are plenty of places out there that say, add another layer in the middle. So you're working with three layers. So some people say, put a layer of fabric, a flannel in the middle. So now it doesn't care which direction you put it in. Now you got flannel right side down, flannel, don't care. It's in the middle, but I would put it right side up. And you've got your top fabric. In this case, it's my cuddle, but it could be, it could be flannel. Now you've got three layers of fabric. Other people, instead of using flannel in the middle, they use fleece. Oh my gosh, you're talking some serious warmth then if you have two layers of flannel and fleece. Others suggest putting batting in the middle, which that will work. The thing with batting is you have to understand with what you're going to do with these squares is you're going to put them together. You're going to stitch a half inch around the edges and then these seams are going to be on the outside. Well, you don't want batting sticking out there. So if you were to put batting in the middle, your batting square needs to be smaller than your block. So I'm, we're gonna cut, we're gonna sew a half inch around and I don't want my batting to show. So I cut my batting square nine inches. And so you put that in there and then you put your flannel on top of that. And now you've got your three layers that, that we would quilt that we're gonna go over in a little bit. So those are your three different ways you can do this. Two layers instead of three three layers putting flannel or fleece in the middle, or three layers putting batting in the middle. Totally your choice, and I think I will be trying a variety of those, and I will eventually let you know what I prefer or what my thoughts are on those or on making them. When you're talking about adding um, batting, that means, okay, you gotta be careful with your squares and positioning them, everything. Okay, not that big of a deal. When you start adding another layer of flannel or fleece in the middle, you've just basically added an extra cost. You've, you've tripled the cost of, well, not tripled it. Your cost is another third more. So that, that can add up. So if you're making a man size quilt, that's five yards of fabric I'm using for the back. And now I need another five yards for the inside. Ouch. And fleece, well, that's probably not very, that um, much cheaper either. So just something to think about also, how much do you want to invest in the cost of your fabric for a rag quilt? Just something to keep in mind because it does add up. When you're talking a little baby quilt like this, basically if you decide to put flannel in the middle, I would really suggest you not do anything more than flannel in the middle. Now you've got three layers of flannel, so you would add another yard and two thirds of flannel to cover your middle. 
Okay, now we're ready for the next step. Okay, all of the fabric is now cut out and now I'm ready to put my layers together. In this case, my layers are pretty easy and because I've got a small quilt, it's gonna to go together pretty fast. One thing to note, I bought for my backing fabric a directional fabric. Yes, it has words on it. <laughs> so, luckily, all of my fabric that's on the top is not directional. I do have these quilt, cute little giraffes, but the giraffes are upside down and all over anyway, so they really kind of sort of aren't directional. Well, actually, I take it back. They are, because I don't think I want my square like that. So, when I work with my giraffe and my backing fabric, both of them being directional, I'm going to want to make sure I have them put together so the top of both of them is the same. So in this case, here's my backing and that's the right way. So I'm going to just flip it over and there's my backing. And here's my giraffe and he's right side together so we're golden. And we're going to just put my squares together. There we go. It's nice and pretty. I have one that's ready to be quilted, almost. Basically you're going to do that with all of your squares. Um, I had a th oh, so if you decided you're putting another layer in the middle, well, then you just add your other piece of fabric, whether it's your fleece, your flannel, or your batting, you're going to put it in the middle. And if you have uh, flannel or fleece, I would suggest you have the um, right side up, and that way that will show nicely through your rag quilt. Actually, thinking about it, it won't matter, but that's what I would do. Okay, so now for quilting. In this case, for me particularly with just one layer, all I'm going to do is quilt it corner to corner. It's going to be very easy. If I had batting in the middle, maybe I'd want to do three lines across, or maybe not. All depends on the size of your square and how much quilting you want to do. But if it was fleece or flannel in the middle, I would still just do a X marks the spot. So I'm going to grab my 12 and a half inch square because it's, of course, there's the one I really wanted, my long ruler. And I'm going to mark corner to corner. So when I go over to the sewing machine, I have a line. Now, Flannel has a tendency to not do very well um, when I'm using my marker or my, my chalk pen. But this one is white, so I'm going to use my pink, my pink marker. That's not too bad. Otherwise, in this case, sometimes what I do is, and of course I don't have it with me, I have a pencil that is very, very sharp and pencil will wash out and I'm going to I'm going to stitch over it anyway. So I would maybe use my pencil for my marking. Or if you have a one of these erasable fusion pilot um, pens that disappear when you iron, you could use that as well. So now I have my block that here is ready and it's marked. And so now I just pin it on the four edges to keep my layers together. Okay, so basically I'm going to go and do that and making sure my giraffes and my back are both right side and all the rest of them it'll be really easy. I just slap them together and I'm going to have them pinned and then they're all going to be ready to go. And then I'll show you the next step. I have all my squares together, my two layers, and now I'm ready to quilt them. You can use a variety of threads. If you really don't want your quilting to show very much, depending on your fabric, go with something neutral like a light gray, a white, whatever fits in well with your fabrics. I personally happen to like a little pop. Because I often do long arm quilting, I have a variety of quilting threads. So I decided to use this variegated thread so it's going to be more obvious on both the front and the back when I quilt it. So I'm going to wind that back up again, 
put it on my little spool thing over here that's okay so what we're going to do is after some plain i decided i prefer the quilted stitches to be a little bit longer length than the normal length i would use when i'm sewing seams so on my sewing machine a standard seam length stitch length is 2.5 i bumped my sewing machine up to three for doing the quilting and because i'm only dealing with two layers of fabric right now i decided there was no reason to get out my um, walking foot to do the stitching it's just as easy to put on a regular um, stitching foot i did choose a stitching foot though that i can easily see the middle so that when i position my fabric with my stitch line that i can see easily see where i need to stitch okay so i have my foot on i can easily see my stitch line and we're going to just get started on that. And I just kind of keep an eye on it, hold it, and watch my stitching line, which sometimes gets hidden a little bit. But main thing is I'm aiming for that other corner. There we go. Stop. And there we go. As I said, you can see I picked a color that is going to really show up and it's going to really show up pretty on the back of mine also. Totally up to you what you want to do with your, your thread color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip around. I'm going to do the other one and I'm going to go through my entire pile of all 20 squares exactly the same way. And then we're ready to lay it out and get to the next part. Now that you have all of your blocks quilted with your X in the middle of it, it's time to lay them all out and figure out the layout that you want. If my table was actually clear, I would do it on my table, but it has a ton of fabric on it. So we did it out on the floor, laid it out, rearranged, figured out the layout that I liked, and then take a picture. Once you've got the layout the way you like, take a picture on your cell phone so you have it, because that way, if for some reason the blocks get kind of messed up, you're not sure, you did some ripping, and you're not sure how you liked it, all you have to do is look at your phone. It's going to come in handy in a minute also. What I did was I picked up two rows and I have them here in front of me. So I have them laid out. So what I will recommend you do is, well, you could, depending on how your, your um, room is laid out for your sewing, you could grab two pieces, take them into the sewing machine, then come back, grab the next piece. You get a lot of exercise that way, which is not all bad, but here's a little bit faster way to speed up the process. Pick up the right left, whoa, the top left corner. Pick it up, next one, next one, next one. The top left corner, the top left corner is always on the top. And then you pick it. So I would recommend as a beginner, start with one row, do that with one row. What you're going to do then is you're going to go to the sewing machine and you're going to take your pieces and if they're directional you're going to make sure whoops nope we don't have that one right there we go now it's right side up and we're going to make sure the other's right side up and we're going to put those two together and then you're going to sew them and then stop and cut the thread then grab the next one then you're going to open that out so you're going to remember oh yeah the, the giraffes were my first one. So now you're gonna up, open it up. Those are gonna be sewn together. You're gonna open it up and now you're gonna double check the back and you're gonna sew the next two together and stop. And then you're gonna sew the last one on and you've got one row done. Then you can come back, lay it out and then do the next row. That way it will keep it nice and simple for you. Otherwise, yeah, there's a, a variety of different ways you can do it, but we're gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna go ahead and do that one row at a time and then when we have all the rows done we'll come back now that i have everything laid out i brought it over to the sewing machine and i today i just brought over one one set with me and here's the important thing that you have to remember in this case i'm actually working with a block 
that has got my backing fabric both on the front and the back. But then this piece here, this is what's going to be on the top and this is on the back. I want to make sure my directional fabric is correct. Yes, it is. And here's the key thing. You want to put your back sides together. Don't do what I just did, <laughs> which is normally putting your fronts, your right sides together. You actually want your seam that you're creating that's going to rag on the top, which means your two back sides go together. Now, if you're using various fabrics on both the front and the back, it really doesn't matter. But in my case, I have one fabric that I always want on the back. So I have to remember back to back together. So in that case, we'll do it this way. So I've got my two backs together. They're both facing the right direction because that's the other thing if you're dealing with directional fabrics. So I'd maybe suggest not choosing directional fabrics for your first rag quilt. It'll make your life easier. And if you also use squares on both the front and the back, that'll make it easy too. Okay, so all we're going to do is I've, I've actually don't have a half inch seam mark here on my foot plate. So what I did was I have this um, blue painter's tape that it's on my sewing machine, my extended table, and I just added a line for the half inch. So that's going to give me what I need. So then my pieces are together and so I can just start And I could have switched to my walking foot. I am dealing with four um, layers of fabric, but I'll admit, kind of lazy today. I don't want to be switching out my foot. So I figure with two, four layers of flannel, my regular foot will do just fine. I also changed the stitch length. So I'm back to my normal seam stitch length of 2.5. So lined up here, got my foot there. And you might just want to go a little slower than usual. And let the sewing machine do its thing. And I'm keeping it nice and straight by my half inch over there. And then you just kind of guess with your presser foot. And there we go. The key thing to note is that you don't need to be too exact because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to come around and clip all that anyway. So there we go and basically we're going to start doing the same things in rows for everything else. I have two rows done. Now what you'll do, actually once you have all your rows done, then you're going to sew the rows together. Here's where you're going to want to kind of press just finger press, doesn't need to be a big deal. Finger press your seams open. Because as you put these rows together, you're going to want to have those pressed open. So now I've got my rows right side up. Yep. Whoops, whoops. Yes, all my directional is right. So I'm going to just grab them and put them together. And that way they're all set so I'm going to match my seams Yep, and keep my seams open. So we're going to kind of press those out. In this case because I am now matching seams I am going to do a quick pin to hold things in place as I go between here and my sewing machine. So basically you're going to do that. You're going to go and you're going to make these nice and neat, open up your seams, pin them together, and then you're going to go to the sewing machine and you're going to sew your rows. So I would suggest you do one row at a time, bring it back, lay it out, grab the next row, connect them together. And that way you're making sure that every row is the way you want it to be. And then by the time you get done, you have all whatever number of rows sewn together and you're almost done. Not quite. Okay, 
all the rows are done. Woohoo! So, and I confirm that it's all the right direction on the back. So there is the back. And as you can see, with the um, colored thread that shows up, you can see we've got a nice diamond pattern on the back. Okay, so here we have it. And what I did now was I went off to the edges and I pressed the seams open because the final step that we're going to do is we're going to stitch a half inch in from the border, from the edges, all the way around the quilt. Basically, putting the final seam around the edges. A half an inch is all you need, and so you want your seams pressed open. So I'm going to go and do that, and then, well, then there's one more step. Then we're going to take our, oh, our little snippers here and what we're going to do is we're going to come in here to, um, well, to the seam allowance if you will and you're going to just come in here and you're going to clip. Yep, about every half inch or so you're going to come in and do another snip. Biggest thing is, you don't want to snip your seams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and stitch all the way around the edges and have that done. And then I think I'm gonna go find a nice comfy chair in the sunroom with the fireplace on and take my little snips and pour myself a glass of wine and I'm going to get everything snipped up and then we'll call it done. Um, I have decided that it's probably a good thing to put a walking foot on if you have a walking foot. Um, especially when you're working with something that has cuddle. Um, I had a little bit of my, the, that, that cuddle fabric had a tendency to shift a little bit more than the flannel did. So I think you'll have better luck if you do put on a walking foot. And that, that baby, that's that's nice that's nice and warm it it's got some weight to it so i think if you start working with a bigger quilt like the one i'm going to do for a guy size which is going to be a lap quilt it's going to have some pretty serious weight to it i can't imagine adding another layer of flannel or fleece to the middle of it but we're going to give it a try sometime okay i'm going to go put the final stitches in it's done look at there Ah, the rag quilt is done. I'm gonna give you a few thoughts on this. One, you'd think, wow, this size rag quilt shouldn't take very long. Well, granted, I did a little bit of recording in between, but even taking that out, it took close to six hours. So my guess is eh, maybe a little less than that. It took me approximately a half an hour to do the clipping. And oh my gosh, am I glad I had these. But even with these, oh my. It was like, oh, oh, my hand is tired. That's hard work. And be careful. These are sharp. And if you get your finger in the way, you will cut it. I know. So have a band-aid handy so you don't bleed on your quilt. Yeah, that was a oh crap. Uh, don't worry though. I'm okay. Um, yeah, it turned out very nicely. Key thing is, once you're done with it, throw it in the wash. Cold water. You don't need to wash it in hot. Cold water, one, maintains your colors. You don't need to wash this in hot. Um, the, the turquoise is kind of bright, so I thought, ah, I'm going to throw in a color catcher just in case, and I washed it in cold water. Really had no bleeding whatsoever. And I mentioned that I was a little worried, not worried, just didn't know how this cuddle was going to come out. Everything came out fine. I don't see any concerns about not having pre-washed. It looks great. So wash it in cold water. Hot water kind of loosens things and um, yeah, just you don't need to wash it in cold hot water. Wash it in cold water. It's just fine. And then the more you wash it, the more it is used, the more, the more this is going to rag up and loosen up. Um, I cut it, oh, I suppose every, yeah, I suppose about every half inch or so is how I trimmed it. And then on the seams, 
I just kind of did it a diagonal and yeah. So I did that. So I would suggest that once you get it all trimmed up, throw it in the wash for a cold wash. I just put it on light. I, I didn't need a full wash. I just wanted to get it washed the first time and get some of that ragging to show up so that you could see what it looks like. And there you have it. And you know what? This is kind of pretty cozy. So I'm anxious to get the guy quilt done and I might have to try it out a little and see what I think. Um, there you have it. So now you know how to make a rag quilt. So it's ready to do when you're ready for one. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to stay up to date with all the new stuff I'm dropping, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified anytime I drop a new video into the channel. I'll be posting new videos every Friday morning with lots of great stuff that you aren't going to want to miss. I also would love to have you join me in my Facebook group. I have a private Facebook group that we're sharing things about life that I love. Quilting, needlework, machine embroidery, wine, books, a lot of fun stuff. So I'd love to have you join me over there. You can find it at facebook.com slash group slash life fulfilled. I also can be found at the normal ways, Pinterest, Instagram, etc. You can find in the description below all the links of the places to find me, including wendyjhaney.com. If you found this video helpful, I would love to have you give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, let me know what you'd like to see. Take care and thanks for watching.